Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to be speaking about photosynthesis. We're going to talk about the process itself. And then afterwards, we're going to move on to the things which limit the process. Uh, and we call those things limiting factors. All right. And so diving straight in, the first thing you need to know is the equation for the process. And the word equation is good enough. And that is carbon dioxide. All right. We should know that carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis. Plus... Well, what do the roots in plants obtain is water. Okay, leads to the production of glucose and let's hope this fits. There we go. Oxygen. All right, oxygen. And you must be thinking that light is missing off there. Well, we don't write light uh, in the equation because light is not a chemical. Okay, this is a chemical equation and light's not a chemical. And so what we can do is we can say plus light uh, above the arrow, okay? Because that uh, indicates that it's a condition rather than a chemical, right? So plus light, um, you could you do see it written as plus light energy as well because it really is the energy from the light that the plants are going to be using. But that is good enough, okay? So that is the equation. Now that is something you do need to remember, something you don't need to remember but you will that you might have seen in past papers or may have come up in the real exam is the uh, the symbol equation. And carbon dioxide is CO2, all right? Water is H2O, okay? In the presence of light, I could write light above there again. Now, glucose is C6H12O6, all right? And oxygen is O2. And obviously that, they could ask you to balance it, right? That would be more a chemistry question, but they could ask you to balance it. To balance it, we've got six carbons here, so we need six over here. All right, we've got 12 hydrogens and two hydrogens in water, so we need six lots of two, all right, making 12. And this will give us, uh, well, six times two makes 12, plus six makes 18. And here we've got six, okay? And so we, need, we have 12 left, and we need six oxygens, all right? And that uh, is now balanced. Okay, so that's the process. And now going into a bit more detail, how are plants adapted to that uh, to carry out that process? So adaptations. Well, the process mainly occurs in the leaves of the plants, right? So I'm going to say leaves of the plants. It does occur in other parts of the plants as well, but the leaves are the main organ where that's going to happen. And so how are the leaves adapted? Well, most of them are broad, okay, with... A high surface area. All right, high surface area. Now, why is a high surface area important? Because having a high surface area means that you will obtain as much sunlight as you can. If the leaves are all closed up, then they wouldn't be exposed to a lot of sunlight. So they need to be as broad as they can, as high surface area as they can, so they can take in as much sunlight as possible. All right. Now, what do they also um, contain? Well, we said in the last video on cells, if you have a look, that they contain chloroplasts, right? The plant cells contain chloroplasts. So I'm going to say chloroplasts contain, and you need to know the pigment which is contained by the chloroplasts, and that is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Okay. Which... And what does that do? Well, it absorbs the sunlight. That's why photosynthesis happens at the chloroplast, because the chlorophyll absorbs the light energy. Okay. Right, so what else? They have air spaces in them, okay? And this allows carbon dioxide to get in and also allows oxygen to leave. Okay, so I'm going to say air gaps air gaps so those air gaps allow carbon dioxide to get in and they allow oxygen to get out of the cells okay because if the cells are really bunched close together then um, it would be difficult for the gas to diffuse out and diffuse in so the air gaps allow i'll just write that down allow diffusion of co2 in and oxygen o2 out all right, what else do they have? They have veins, okay, veins, which means good supply. This isn't like us, they don't have blood. The veins supply water, all right? 
And also they have Stomata, which allows gases in and out of the leaf. All right, so the air gaps are within the leaf. Uh, which surround the cells and they allow the movement of CO2 and oxygen. The stomata allow the CO2 and oxygen to get in and out of the leaf. Okay, there is a key difference there. All right, and so they really are the adaptations of the leaf. And now we're going to go on to limiting factors of photosynthesis. Right, so I'll just write here limiting factors. Now, very briefly, what do we mean by limiting factors? Well, a limiting factor is something when if you limit the amount of that something, it will limit the rate of photosynthesis. And one example I'm going to give you straight away is light. Okay. Now, what do we mean by that? If you put a plant in the dark, photosynthesis is going to occur very slowly or not at all. The reason being because you've limited the amount of light and so a limiting factor is the amount of light that the plant is getting because you change the amount of light and you change the rate of photosynthesis all right now what you're going to see a lot of are graphs okay so if we've got a graph uh, like this and we've got light I'm going to say light intensity on the bottom because we can't just say light. That doesn't really mean anything. Okay, and on the side, we've got rate of P dot S, which stands for photosynthesis. Okay, basically, we're going to be drawing a graph or interpreting a graph um, where we change the amount of light and see what happens to photosynthesis. What it's going to look like is this. So at zero, so at the bottom here, you're going to have no photosynthesis because there's no light. As you increase the amount of light, the rate of photosynthesis increases, okay? And that's because uh, the leaf is able to take in more light, carry out photosynthesis more efficiently and effectively. Okay, but as you carry on, the graph will start to do this, and then it'll eventually actually flatten off, like so. And why is that? Well, because after you've reached a certain light intensity, the plant has all the light it needs to carry on photosynthesis, right? And when it plateaus, then increasing the amount of light doesn't actually make any difference because you've already given it enough light okay what we say is that then something else is limiting the rate of photosynthesis so now you've got plentiful light at this part here okay so we're talking about this part here you've got a lot of light but some maybe you haven't got enough water to be able to carry on with that amount of light okay and so there are other things which limit photosynthesis as well and i've just mentioned one and that is water okay obviously if you have no water then the plants gonna die so you're not gonna have photosynthesis and so if we've got water um, let's say water level so the amount of water okay and we've got rate of photosynthesis sorry for this handwriting okay it's gonna be much the same thing because as you increase your amount of water your photosynthesis will go up but after a while um, it will plateau because you've got enough water Right. If you actually increase the water by too much, then we might actually see this happen. Okay. And the reason being is because then you've drowned the plant. Right. Plants can't take too much water, and then you will drown the plant like that. But for the most part, you will see this because you're not going to be putting in, you know, gallons of water, and the rate of photosynthesis will increase up until a point for the same reasons as the light. Okay. Another one is your CO2. Okay. Or carbon dioxide. That is going to be exactly the same relationship. Okay, so what I'm going to say is CO2 concentration is on the x axis. Again, no surprises here, rate of photosynthesis is on the y axis. As you increase the amount of CO2, you increase the rate of photosynthesis because photosynthesis requires CO2. And it goes up and up and up and up and up and up. Until you've got too much CO2, or you've got enough CO2, I should say. Right, you've got enough CO2 that photosynthesis is going as fast as it can. So, what will happen is that increasing the CO2 is not going to make any difference anymore, and so it just carries on flat. Then we say something else must be limiting 
the rate of photosynthesis, okay? For example, if you've got enough water, enough light, and enough CO2, you will be able to have a certain rate of photosynthesis, okay? But if it's at zero degrees Celsius, the rate of photosynthesis is limited because being that cold, the enzymes can't work as fast as they could at a higher temperature, and so you've limited the rate of photosynthesis. And that brings us on to our last one, which is our temperature. Temperature. There we go. And no surprises, we're going to draw another graph. There may be surprises in the shape of the graph, though. Okay, so I'm going to put on the bottom temperature. Right, and I'm going to put degrees Celsius here because I'm actually going to put a couple of numbers in. And I'm going to put rate of photosynthesis on the side. Now, this is the one which does look different, and so you have to be really careful about this one. Because if, let's say, that I start the temperature at zero degrees Celsius, right, and I'm going to put in some points. I'm going to say there's 30 degrees Celsius, there's 40 degrees Celsius, okay, and there's 50 degrees Celsius. Those are important, and you'll see why. At zero degrees Celsius, we've just said that... With a certain amount of light, CO2, and uh, water, photosynthesis will happen, but it will be slow, okay? It will be limited. So we're not going to start from zero, okay? Because if everything else is, is okay, then maybe we're, we've got some photosynthesis happening, okay? As you increase the temperature, the rate of photosynthesis increases, okay? That's the rule. So it goes up, and it goes up, and it goes up, okay? And you'll notice that I've stopped there, um, it's almost here. That's about 37 degrees. Just like human body temperature, this is around about the optimum temperature for a plant, right? So about 37 to 40 degrees, the plants are happiest and they're working fastest. So photosynthesis is quick. Now, what happens after that? After that, you get too hot. Plants can't deal with being too hot, right? Just like um, a lot of organisms can't survive in too hot conditions. You, even if you put a human being in 50 degrees Celsius, right, and you didn't give it shelter and you didn't um, give it other things, it would struggle, right? Now, what happens with a plant is that the plant can't take it at all and the plant is actually going to die, okay? Because the temperature causes enzymes to denature. Enzymes are needed um, for photosynthesis, and when the temperature goes above 40 degrees Celsius, they start to denature. It's too hot. So what happens is this. You get to about 40, and then you plummet, okay? Heading towards 50 degrees Celsius, you plummet. And the reason being is enzymes have um, denatured. Okay, I should put that arrow more down here, because up there... Uh, they haven't properly denatured yet, but they're, they're starting to uh, lose shape. So the enzymes have denatured as a result of temperature, and that's why it has plummeted and the plant has died. So this one is drastically different to the shape of the other graphs, if we have a look. The other ones, they're pretty much the same, but temperature does not look the same. It doesn't start from zero, because at zero degrees Celsius, you still, uh, you know, the plant's not dead, it's just cold, and so photosynthesis still happens, right? If you went down to minus... 200 degrees, yes, it would be dead, but um, we don't go down that far because that's pretty ridiculous. Um, and so you start at zero, and uh, the plant is still alive, carrying out photosynthesis, just not as fast as it would like. Okay, and that is the trend in the limiting factors, okay? And so you need to remember these limiting factors, and you need to remember how to draw the graphs, okay? Also need to remember the adaptations of the leaf, and you need to remember the equation, the word equation, of photosynthesis. The chemical equation, uh, in terms of symbols, they should give to you uh, if, they're, if it's going to come up in a question. But the word equation, you do need to know. All right, and that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope that's been useful for you and you've enjoyed. If you do still have questions on photosynthesis, please feel free to send me a direct email um, using the link in the comment box below. Or post a comment... Um, sorry, link in the description box, or post a comment in the comment box below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.